welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from pastors here at The Rock. Is anybody excited to be in the house of God? Ooh, I'll, I'll tell you what, today is a good day to be alive. Today is a good day to be saved. Today is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. In the, <laughs> In the house of the Lord, man, God's glory and God's goodness and God's power is on display. And that's why King David came along and he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord because, man, my life is touched, my life is changed, and I'll never be the same again. I get everything I need in the house of God. Can somebody say amen? So I'm excited to be with you. I'm excited for the word of God tonight. Before I get ahead of myself, I, uh, well... Of course, my name is Joseph. I, I, like Pastor Dan said, I've been a pastor here at the Rock Church. Been working here for 10, 10 and a half years. Can you believe that? Pastor Joe, you don't look more than 18 years old. <laughs> I receive that in Jesus' name. <laughs> that, that means when I'm 80, I'm going to look like I'm 50. Uh, so I receive that. I receive that. And so, um, anyways, this is my wife right over here on the front row. Marnie, if you could give her a bit of my beautiful... My beautiful blessing of a wife, and uh, we were married four years ago and two children. Four years and two children ago. Actually, we've got a a picture of them right over here on the on the screen. What a blessing! Tell you what, I don't deserve any of them, but you follow God, and and you end up in wonderful places. And so, man, what a blessing! I'm so blessed with my wife and and my kids. Hey, uh, enough about me. I'm going to get down my knees. I'm going to pray. So, what do you say we go before the Lord together and let's invite Him to come and speak to our hearts? today. Father, we just thank you for your house. Father, we thank you, Lord, that, uh, Lord, you abide in your house, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you have also made your home in us. But, Father, when, when it's difficult to find your presence, when it's difficult, Lord, we thank you for the house of God, where we can come, Lord, and come into an atmosphere of faith, be joined together. Lord, where two or three are gathered together, there you are in the midst of them. So we thank you that you're in your house today. Lord, we've not come to hear from a man, but we've come to hear from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are the promise of the Father. And you, you promised that you would teach us. You promised that you would lead us and guide us in all tru- into all truth. You promised that you would speak to us tonight. And so, Lord, we've come expecting today. Open up our hearts. Lord, cause us to receive today. And, Father, we'll give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor for all that you accomplish and all that is wrought in our hearts and our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody in agreement with that said? Amen. 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 Not every time that you come to church to get the word of God, will you come and hear a message on something new. Not every time that you, and I'm I'm not talking about the Rock Church, I'm talking about any church that you go to, regardless of what continent you may be on. Any time that you go to church... Uh, to get the word of God, it's not all the time that you'll hear a message on something new. In fact, often you'll find that uh, as the preacher uh, opens up the word of God and, and gives you the passage or the reference of scripture to go to, as you turn, you'll find, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I know this verse. I've heard about this verse before. Uh, and they, or or maybe, maybe he'll come along and he'll give you the title of his message. And, and you'll recognize, well, uh, I've never maybe heard of this title before, but I, but I know this. I'm familiar with this subject. I, I, I kind of know what's, uh, gonna, what he's going to talk about, what's going to be taught on. And the temptation in that moment, and listen, we've all been there. The temptation in that moment is to turn off, to shut down. Uh, uh, sometimes the temptation, and, and I'll be the first to raise my hand, is, well, I kind of already know about this, and I can think of three people right now who need to hear a message like this. In, in fact, I'm going to go to the CD counter after service, and I'm going to give it to them personally. And, and, and when we approach God's word that way, we miss out on all that God was trying to do in that moment. You see, I believe, in fact, I know that God uses repeat messages Forgive, for lack of a better term, repeat messages on purpose. They are by God's design. And repeat messages are for the purpose of strengthening you and I in the things that we already have. They're for the purpose of strengthening you and I in the wisdom, in the knowledge, in the beliefs, and in the truths that have already been established in our lives. 
You see, God is in the strengthening business, and he's looking to strengthen you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. See, God wants to make sure that you've got what it takes to win the battle at hand, to get the job done, to lay hold of everything that he has for you with your spouse and with your children on the job, in the marketplace, in the school place. God wants to make sure that you have the strength uh, uh, to endure. And the way that he strengthens us is with repetition. God uses repetition to reinforce. God uses repetition to reinforce. And when we come to church and we think, well, I've already heard about this before. I already know about this. Then we shut down and we, and we miss out on all, on all that God had for you and I. Uh, you know, I remember when I was a junior in high school. Now, I know that for some of you that might be a little bit further than, uh, than for others in the house. But uh, I remember I, I was a junior in high school. I finished uh, my high school, uh, finished the, my junior high year, and I went to Puerto Rico with my, with my grandmother. Uh, for a month. There in Puerto Rico, uh, everybody speaks Spanish, and uh, not, and uh, about, I would say, at least the people I was around, about half of them spoke English. So needless to say, I had to learn Spanish pretty quick if I was going to get around. And, and so after the month was over, I could pretty well speak in Spanish as far as the present tense was concerned. Now, I, I struggle a little bit with the past tense phrases and the future tense phrases, but man, I, I pretty well learned Spanish there that month. Today, I don't know if I could tell you 10 words in Spanish. See, if you don't, help me out tonight, if you don't use it, you lose it. All right? Uh, uh, any good teacher knows. You know, imagine, imagine for a moment you send your, your children to elementary school, and you find out that the teacher goes over a subject one time and never goes back to it again. Well, the teacher hasn't done their job. You see, God, uh, the teacher knows that if, if they're going to be a good teacher, they have to use repetition. They have to go over, over it to make sure that uh, the students are strong in that area of their life. And so God uses repetition. Now let me make this statement today before we move on. Strengthening the wisdom, the beliefs, the knowledge, the understanding that we have is just as important as forming new beliefs. It's just as important as gaining new knowledge. It's just as important as acquiring new wisdom, strengthening the things that we already have. God is in the strengthening business today. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. Amen. Uh, tonight, if you're taking notes, the title of the message is this, Discovering a Passion for God's Word. Discovering a Passion for God's Word. I'm so thankful tonight that our senior leadership, our senior pastors, and our teaching team has taught us for years that the Word of God is not just a history lesson. The Word of God is not just a book full of good ideas, good suggestions, uh, uh, bedtime stories by which, uh, you know, we put our kids to bed at night, although I, I would say that's probably a good, that's a wonderful way to get the Word of God into your kids, but it, it's more than that. It is the blueprint by which every man and woman, young and old, should live their life by. It has been written by God and has been given by God to transform your life and to transform my life. It was written for our exhortation, for our edification. I like this one. It was written for our example. And you know what? Today, if you do what the men and the women of God in the Bible did, you will get the same results that they did. It's been written to transform our lives. It's the blueprint that all of us should live by. Listen, regardless of your race, regardless of your upbringing, regardless of your personal experience, regardless of your ethnicity, the Word of God transcends all of that. It is for you and it is for me today. If I could go just a little bit further and say, regardless of the title that comes before your name or the title that comes after, you and I need the Word of God today. It is the blueprint by which every man, every woman should live by. Let me take you now to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's look at verse number 16. 2 Timothy chapter 3 in verse number, number 16. I want to show this to you in the word of God. It is the blueprint. It is, it, it's been written by God and given by God to transform our lives today. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 16. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable. The word of God will profit your life. The word of God will benefit your life. The word of God will add to your life. It says it is profitable. Okay, it is, uh, it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, 
for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Watch this, that the man of God may be complete. Anybody out there today want to be complete? That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Anybody out there want to be thoroughly equipped for every good work? How's it going to get done? It's going to be, get done by, the Bible says here, the scriptures. The scriptures. Let me take you now to, to 1 Timothy. Just a couple of verses here. 1 Timothy. Go back just a few pages into 1 Timothy chapter 1. I want to show you something here that Paul tells Timothy that I find very interesting, that, that, that I, find, I, I like very much. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 18. Paul says to Timothy, he says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Let me, let's try that one more time. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Now, at a first glance, you, you might look at that verse and you, and you might say, and, and, and you might come to the conclusion, um, I, I'm not too sure if, 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 that's, if that verse is really for me. I mean, after all, Paul is being very specific uh, here in this verse. He's being very specific as to whom he is talking to. And, and, and what he's talking about here in this verse is, is he's, he's pointing Timothy toward the prophecies that were made concerning Timothy. So what does this verse have to do with me? In fact, the Bible really doesn't, go, doesn't disclose to us what those prophecies were or, or, or when they were given. So, so, and so at an initial glance, we can kind of miss what God is wanting to say to you and I today. Uh, and so let me do this. I want to ask everybody a question uh, tonight. I like questions. I believe that God likes questions. There are questions all throughout the Word of God. And you know, when you come across them, answer them. God didn't ask a question for His benefit. He asked it for ours. And, and I have found that questions help me uh, take a time out, help me to digest what's being said. Uh, I like to put it like this because, see, if you're anything like me, you don't always get it right off the bat. Uh, uh, questions uh, help me let the elevator go all the way to the top. So, so, so let, me, uh, let me ask you a question today. What is prophecy? What is prophecy? Let's just make it real simple. Is not prophecy a word from God. Now, if you want, if you want to get technical, you can, you, you can quote what the Bible says in Corinthians. It is exhortation, edification, and comfort to the church. But is that not a word from God toward Timothy? So basically what Paul says to Timothy here is he says, he says I'm, I, I charge you, I, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the word of God that was made concerning you, that by it you may wage the good warfare. And listen, today, if Timothy could wage a good warfare uh, based upon uh, uh, the word of God given to him, how much more can you and I today wage a good warfare because we have the word of God according to the word of God? Hey, listen, there are some people in the house tonight, and you know, you've been dealing with issues, and you've been dealing with circumstances, and you've been dealing with different things, and you feel tonight like you're, uh, like you're fighting a losing battle. And I heard a wise preacher once say, he, he said this, what is a good warfare? It's a winning one. And I'm here to tell you today that if you, I got good news, if you can get a hold of the word of God concerning your life, the word of God will make a winner out of you. The word of God will lift you up. The word of God will turn you around. The word of God, praise the Lord, is the solid rock that we stand on today. And it will, do, it, it will get the job done on your behalf tonight. So he tells Timothy, he says, he, he says, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy, that, that you may wage a good warfare according to the word of God that was made concerning you. We can also wage a good warfare according to the word of God that has been given us, the written word of God. One more verse. One more verse. I won't have you uh, turn there today. Uh, but if you can just pop it up on the overhead screen, John, for me. Acts chapter 20, verse number 32. I really like this verse. It says, so now, brethren, I commend, to, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. The word of God able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Listen, there are some things that are within your control today. There are some things that are within your grasp. There are some things today that belong to you. It's called the inheritance of the Lord. It's what God has given you in Christ Jesus. And what's going to make you aware of these things? The Word of God. What's going to deliver them to you and get them to you? It's going to be the Word of God. 
You know, I just, uh, I, I, I actually in the youth group, uh, that, that's where I work in the youth, I work with the young adults, as I've, I've said probably ten times already. But um, uh, uh, there in the youth group, we just did a series entitled uh, uh, Understanding Our Inheritance. And we talked about how, you know what, if somebody left you a million dollars in a bank account with your name on it, but failed to tell you that it was there, you would live your entire life and never be able to take advantage of it. All the interest it may even collect, it would sit there in the bank account and it would rot. And you would ne- because you didn't know. A- a- and the word of God is the thing that's going to let you know what belongs to you in Christ Jesus. Give you the tools that you need to take advantage of it and, and allow, those, allow the things of God to be active in your life. All right, so the word of God, it's the blueprint that all men should, buy, should live by. It's been given by God, written by God to transform our lives today. That means this, no longer can you and I afford to live lives separated, separated from the word of God. We cannot afford to live life uh, uh, apart from the word of God. Uh, may this not be the generation that does not bring their Bibles to church. Uh, I, I, I tell the youth often, listen, bring your Bible to church. Help God help you get the word of God on the inside of you because when you face the issues of life, you're going to need to know the word of God for yourself. Yes. Listen, Pastor Joe can't go with you everywhere that you go. The Rock Church cannot go with you everywhere that you go. You're going to face issues. You're going to face uh, 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 things are going to come up. Listen, if you haven't recognized it yet, ready or not, here comes trouble. All right, the Bible's, the Bible, the, hey, Jesus, Jesus didn't promise a perfect life. He said, in this life, you'll face tribulation. In this life, you're going to face some things, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. All right, so we're going we're, we're gonna to face issues, and we need to know the word of God uh, for ourselves. We cannot afford to live a life separated from the word of God. Uh, maybe uh, if I could be a little bit more specific today, uh, we cannot afford to bring our Bibles to church during service, go home, put them on the shelf, and let them collect ducks, dust until the next service. God's never called you or I to allow a preacher or a pastor to be the sole source of the word of God. He's called you and I to read it for ourselves. He's called you and I to know it for ourselves. You know, the Bible says in Acts that the Bereans were more noble-minded. The Bereans uh, were more honorable uh, than the Thessalonians because not only did they hear what Paul had to preach, but they went home and they studied and found out that what he said was true. The Word of God must be a part of our everyday lives. Now, I'm not saying today that if you don't read the Word of God every last day of your life that you're in sin somehow. But, you know, after two or three days, you better kick yourself where where it counts and get into the Word. Because God God has given it to us uh, uh, to to be a part of our daily lives. We cannot afford to live lives separated from God's Word. Now, I believe that God wants to help us get into His Word. And the way that He wants to help us get into His Word is by helping us to develop, helping us to discover a passion for his word. You know, let's just be honest in in the house tonight, what you're passionate about, uh, uh, what what things that you have a desire for, you will make room for. It doesn't matter matter how busy you've been, it doesn't matter if if, if things are going on good or bad or ugly, you will make room for the things that you are passionate about. Hello, somebody. Uh, uh, And and so God wants to help develop a passion, a a desire for his word on the inside. Let me take you now to Psalms. Psalms 119. I love what the psalmist says here. God wants to help us develop and discover a passion on the inside for his word. A passion for God's word. Psalms 119, verse number 1. Beginning with verse 162. He says this, he says, I rejoice at your word as one who finds great treasure. I hate and abhor lying, but I love your law, your word. Seven times a day I praise you because of your righteous judgments talking about the word of God, the judgments written down, the judgments of God. Great peace have those who love your law, your word, uh, and nothing causes them to stumble. Wow. Um, uh, 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 Lord, I hope for your salvation, and I do your commandments, your word. My soul keeps your testimonies, your word, and I love them exceedingly. Wow. 
You know, earlier we said, man, what, what, the, what we see the men and women of God do in the word of God, if we'll do, we'll get the same results. And, and, and here we find this passion, this desire, uh, this love for God's word uh, here, here in the life of the, of the psalmist. Should we not also have the same passion, the same love, the same, the same desire for the word of God? All right, and, and, so, and so let me ask everybody this question. Do you think it was difficult for the psalmist to make the word of God a part of his everyday life? I mean, looking at it and considering it to be like great treasure. Looking at it and say, oh, I keep your testimonies because I love them so. No, it was not hard for him to uh, live a lifestyle uh, of God's word, to have, the, to have his life intermingled and intertwined with the word of God because of his great passion for it. Everybody follow me? Tonight, because of his great passion, because of his great desire, man, I don't believe that it was hard for him to get into the word of God, to, uh, to open up uh, uh, the Bible of the time and look over what God had to say. Now, I also believe this. I, I, I also believe this, that, uh, that the reason he was so passionate, the reason he was so in love with the word of God was because of what the word of God was and what the word of God did in his life. See, if you can find out what something is and what something does, you can value it properly. And you can prioritize it properly. And it will birth a passion and a desire for, for that thing when you realize what something is and when you, and when you realize what something does. I remember uh, as a teenager, I was on a walk actually with my grandmother. She's right over here in the house today. I was on a walk with my grandma and uh, I, I saw something uh, kind of shining on the ground. And, and I walked over and I picked it up and uh, it was a necklace. Now, I've never been a jewelry person, all right? I wear my wedding ring, maybe a watch, that's it. No nose rings, no lip rings, no, t no belly button rings, no pinky toe rings. God bless you if you have them, not for me. <laughs> uh, uh, and so, and, and so I, 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 I handed it to her. I said, look what I found. She said, oh, wow. Uh, come to find out, she, she ended up taking it to a jewelry shop and having it examined. It was 14 karat gold that necklace. Once I found out what it was, it birthed in me a desire for it. And boy, I put that necklace on and I made sure, I made sure everywhere, everywhere that I went, you was kind of hanging out, you know, all nice and cool, checking me, uh, you know, check me out, check, because I found out what it was. Before that, it was just a necklace to me. So when you find out what something is and also what it does, you can value it properly, uh, you can prioritize it properly, and you know, it will, it will birth a desire within you. Um, uh, uh, how many of you can remember when you were a child, or, or, or maybe this, uh, maybe you can remember telling your kids something like this. If you eat your veggies, and if you eat, the, or, or, or uh, for me, my, grandpa, my grandfather would always tell me, if you'll eat the crust on your bread, you'll get big muscles. <laughs> if it wasn't big muscles, I don't want to talk about what that might have been, uh, but, uh, but, but he, uh, he, he would tell me, my parents, if you, if you eat your veggies, if you eat the crust on your bread, you'll get, good, you'll get big muscles. Now, I'm not sure that that works so well for me, <laughs> but, um, but, but what was the purpose of a statement like that? What was the purpose of a statement like that? That's right, to birth a desire within that child to eat the veggies, to eat the crust. See, you're kind of hoping that if I can get the child to understand what this will do for him, then I, can, then I can get him to eat it. I will birth a desire in him. I was trying to tell my son the other day, if you take a nap, you'll, get, you'll get, grow up big and strong like daddy. I don't want to take a nap. Ah! Go to sleep! Please, just go to sleep. Uh, all right, that's, that, so if you, if you find out what something is and what something does, uh, it'll birth a desire within you for that thing. Today... Uh, I want to talk to you. Uh, I just got two points. Can you handle two points tonight? Two points about what God's word is and what God's word does. Number one today, it's food. Number one today, God's word is food. Pastor Dan talked about it this morning. Encouraged me. I thought, ooh, I must be on track with the Holy Spirit. If he's already talking about it, I must be doing good. Good. The, Holy, uh, uh, the word of God, what is it? It's food. What does it do? It will feed you. It will keep you spiritually healthy. It will help you to keep your spiritual fervor. It will help you to be spiritually robust, healthy, healthy. Now, we, we know in the natural, if we starve ourselves, we're not going to be good for anything, right? 
So we, we have to partake of the word. It is food and it will feed you. It is food and it will fill you. Listen, listen today. I've been empty and I've been full. I've been hungry and I've been full. And full is better. Full is better. You know, Pastor Dan sent me a text message yesterday. He said, hey, Pastor Joe, would you like to have lunch with us? Tomorrow we are having Southwest chicken salad. I said, ooh, absolutely. Sounds wonderful. Lori, it was wonderful. I don't know if you're here today, but it was wonderful. And I text Pastor, I also text Pastor, Pastor Dan back, and I said, and have them double up on the chicken. Because <laughs> you see, I've been empty, I've been hungry, and I've been full, and full is better. And the Word of God will fill you over and over again. It will fill you with the peace of God. It'll fill you with the goodness of God. It'll fill you with the love of God. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. It will fill you up with everything that you need. And then just like the body takes in food and begins to distribute the vitamins and the nutrients and everything that you need to the rest of your body, the Holy Spirit will take that word that you're putting in and begin to distribute it to every area of your life. It'll come up on the inside of your heart. It will set you free. It will deliver you. It's food. And we need to partake. We, we need to look at your neighbor tonight. This is, have a little fun with me tonight. Look at your neighbor tonight and say, eat it up. <laughs> eat it up. Eat it up. The word of God is food. I love Jer Jeremiah chapter 15, verse number 16. If you, you guys just pop that one up. It says, your words were found and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I'm called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Your words were found, and I ate them. And your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Listen, today there's some people in the house that need some joy. Uh, it's come time for you to rejoice. Uh, and, and what's going to fill you with it? It's, it's going to be the word of God. De depositing and, and, and investing and sowing the word of God into your, into your heart and into your mind. Number two today, what, what is the word of God and what does it do? Number one, it was food. It feeds us and fills us. Number two today, it's truth. The word of God is, is truth. Hey, listen, today, if you're looking for truth, look no further. It's in the word of God. Listen, today, I don't know what, what area of life or, 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 or what walk of life you may be in today. Or, or what area you, you may be looking for truth in. But listen, today, look no further. The word of God is truth. Yeah. And you know what? The word of God, it will, it, 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 the psalmist says, King, uh, yeah, no, the psalmist says, he, he says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It will lead you and it will guide you. It will keep you from the snares of sin, from the snares of the wicked, from losing your life because it's truth. Anybody here want to live, uh, want to live by a lie? Sorry, sorry, tricked you. Some of you are like, yeah! <laughs> Anybody? No, 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 nobody here wants to live by life. We want to live by the truth. And the word of God is truth. I love what Jesus says. Jesus says, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples. You are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth, Pastor Jim tells us all the time, God set you free to get the truth, or excuse me, God set, yeah, God set you free so you can get the truth that'll make you free. And what truth are we getting? It's the word of God. It's the word of God. John chapter 17, verse number 17. John chapter 17, verse number 17. Jesus makes a cool statement. Actually, I, I really like this, this verse here. Here in John chapter 17, Jesus is praying. And he comes before the Father and he says, he says, God, I, I come before you today and I want to I wanna pray. I want to pray for all those that you've entrusted to me. And then he adds something really cool to that. He says, not, all, not only those that are here in front of me, but all those who will believe as a result of their testimony. How many realize today that's you and me? That's you and me. And, and so he, he's making this prayer and he comes along in, in John 17, verse number 17. He makes this statement. He says, he says, God sanctify them by your truth. Set them apart. God, uh, do, do, uh, do a work in their life. Make the difference in their life by, by your truth. And then he makes this, uh, this statement here. It's a four-word sentence, short and to the point. He says, your word is truth. Your word is truth. God's word is truth. It will lead you. It will guide you. It will keep you from the snares. It will set you free tonight. That's what it is, and that's what it does. 
Now tonight, I believe, I believe uh, uh, that the Holy Spirit is stirring some desire on the inside of, of some people here. A desire for, his, uh, for the Word of God. You might say, to, all right, Pastor Joe, that sounds really cool. I, 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 man, I, I, I would say that I have a desire for the Word of God. What do I do now? And in closing, I want to just give you two things that you can do now that you've heard about what the Word of God is and what it does. And I believe that you have a desire beginning to stir on the inside of you. Uh, uh, what, what do I do now? Number one, really easy, read it. Read it. We've kind of already said that tonight. Read the Word of God. Take time. Listen, if you got to give up the Laker game, if you got to give up the sitcom, if you got to, I don't know, the Facebook, I don't know, the Xbox, I don't know, what, if, whatever it is that, 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 that may be taking up your time and not allowing you to get into the Word of God, set that aside and read it. And read it. Read the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 20. Actually, we can go there. I've been quoting a lot to you here. Let's just go to Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 20. Sorry in the back. I just had them write down the reference, but let me just take you there. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 20. He says, my son, or my daughter, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. What's he talking about? He's talking about reading the word of God. Do not let them depart from uh, uh, your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Actually, if you look at the, uh, the, the, the Greek, the word health actually means medicine. Medicine to all their flesh. Your brother Hagen used to challenge us at Bible school. He used to say, you just meditate on the word of God. It's medicine. It'll cause those warts on your hand to dry up. It'll cause your body to be in, to be in health. It's, it's medicine, all right? But we're talking about today, but, but we have to read it, all right? We have to read it. That's what we're talking about today. Uh, um, uh, in, in Luke 24, Jesus, actually, there's some disciples on the road to a place called Emmaus. And uh, Jesus, Jesus had died, and, and the disciples had not seen him uh, yet. And so uh, all of a sudden the Bible says that Jesus appears with them and begins to walk with them. And he asks them, why are you sad? And they say, have you not heard what's, been, what's, what's happened? And so anyways, to make a long story short, uh, the Bible says that Jesus began to open up the scriptures to them. And, and, and then and they got to the end of their journey. It became nighttime. They invited Jesus into the house. Jesus came in, and the Bible said, and they, they have not recognized that it's been Jesus up until this point. And so they come to the table, and it says that as they broke bread, that they realized it was Jesus, and then Jesus vanished. And then later on, when they give their testimony, they made this statement, did not our hearts burn? Uh, we're talking about passion today. We're talking about desire. Did not our hearts burn? Uh, actually, the Greek there means, did, did he not set our hearts on fire? As he opened up the scriptures today uh, to us, and so all, all I want to simply say to you today is, is this: in regards to the, in, in regards to this point, is that uh, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you open up the Word of God and you read it, He will open it up to you. He will give you revelation. He will set your heart on fire, Amen. and on fire for the Word of God. Okay. So, but but but, but you got to read it. I have to read it. All right. What do I, all right. So, so now that I have a passion uh, for God's word uh, uh, stirring within me, what do I do? Read it. And number two today, and we'll close with this. Do it. Do it. Elijah, if I could get you to help me real fast. We have to do it. See, the word of God is like a can of paint. Pastor Joe, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, I owned a home uh, recently in Beaumont. Uh, and I lived there for three years. And um, uh, uh, I grew up in a house that we're, we didn't paint our walls. They were just white, dirty white in some places. Uh, uh, and, and so that's just the way I grew up. That's just, sorry, mom and dad. Uh, <laughs> um, and, so, and so I didn't, uh, I didn't you know, I, I, I just, that was normal to me. So I, I bought a house, and what did I do? I left the, the walls white. I had a dog, man, he used to run up against this corner trying to turn it fast, and it got real dirty. Just real, I, I, 
I didn't do anything about it, all right? So, uh, and, and so, um, and then I remember uh, my father-in-law came to me and said, hey, listen, you, 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 should paint, you should paint the inside of your house. And so I went, to, I went to Home Depot, and I thought, okay, all right, l- let me check this out. Let me see, uh, let me see, how, you know, I, I've never painted my house before, and so let me see what, what they may have to show me. Uh, about painting the inside of my house. I found all these catalogs. I found all these colors. You know, they have a hundred, a hundred shades of any color or more. A hundred shades of any color you want. All right. And it's like, oh my gosh, what do I choose? All right. And so I began to discover. I began to discover all that was available to me. And, and you know, when you when you open up the Word of God, you begin to discover all that's been made available to you. In fact, in fact, you can start to stack it up. All the wisdom, all the knowledge, all the understanding, all the revelation. You, you can say, it's, almost like, it's almost like you go to Home Depot, you find everything that you want until you get all these colors and, and you're ready to bring the inside of your house to life. But then what do you do? You take the cans of paint and you put them in the garage and you do nothing. <laughs> As much as you have discovered, it will not benefit your life. It will not benefit the inside of your home. Isn't that right? Right. So the Word of God is like a can of paint. Its value is in its application. The Word of God is like a can of paint. Its value, its true value is in the doing of God's Word, the application of it in your life. That's when it will change your life. That's when it will make a difference in your life. You and I must do it. We have to do it. And I love what, what and we'll close with this verse. I know I said I'm closing, and I'm, I promise I'm going to get there. Joshua chapter 1. This is the last verse, I promise. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. The Word of God is like a can of paint. Its value is in the application. God tells Joshua. God tells Joshua. He says, this book of the law, what is he talking about? God's Word shall not depart from your mouth, but you you shall meditate in it day and night. Watch what he says here. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then, not before, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Now the word prosperous here in the word of God, contrary to popular belief, is not talking about material wealth, not talking about money. Although I think it, it, it probably does include money. But the word prosperous here in the word of God, it means to push forward and to break out. It means to push forward. And are there any areas of your life tonight in which you want to push forward and you want to break out of? If you ever come across a time or a moment in your life where you say, you know what, I, I need some forward, mo- forward momentum in my life. I need to get beyond this. I, I, I need to graduate to some new devils. I, I, I need to grow up spiritually. The word of God... The Word of God will cause you to push forward and break out in your marriage. Will cause you to push forward and break out on your job. Will cause you to push forward and break out in every area of your life as you apply it to your life. So if you got something good from God's Word, go ahead and give Him a, a great big praise. Hey, listen, before, before I let you go, I just want to make sure that everybody here is right with God. I want to make sure that at, at the end of your life, you end up in heaven and not hell. And listen, let's just be very honest tonight. There are the, those are the only two places you can go when you die, according to the word of God. It's heaven or hell. There's no coming back as a frog. There's no coming back as a dog. Not everybody's going uh, to make it to their own personal heaven uh, some way. It's, it's God's heaven or, or it's hell. And so I want to make sure, again, that you're right with God tonight. Where are you at with God tonight in your relationship with him? Let me ask you a question tonight. I just want you to answer this question in your heart. And, and the answer to your question will show a lot about where you're at. If you were to die tonight, God forbid, if something were to happen, if you were to get in an accident, your heart stopped, and today was your last day on the earth, where would you end up? Would it be heaven or would it be hell? Would it be heaven or would it be hell? Now today, if you answered that question in your heart and you said, Pastor Joe, uh, man, I I certainly hope I'd make it to heaven. Can I love you enough to tell you the truth? Nowhere in the Word of God do you find that people can hope their way into heaven. 
And I want to love you enough to also tell you, you need to get right with God tonight. Pastor Joe, I think I'd make it. Nowhere in the Word of God will you find that you can think your way into heaven. In fact, let me go a, a little bit further with you tonight. What makes you think that you're going to make it to heaven when you die? Pastor Joe, I'm a good person. Nowhere in the Word of God does it say that you can be good enough to make it to heaven. The Bible is very clear. All of our good works are as filthy rags before God. All of our good works, we all fall short of the glory of God. We are all in need of a Savior. We are all in need for the blood of Jesus to be shed and his body to be broken. You cannot get there on your good works. It's not in the word of God. You cannot be good enough. Pastor Joe, I, I, I know who Jesus is. You know, nowhere in the word of God does it say because you know who Jesus is that you can get to heaven. You can't get to heaven because you, you're religious. You attend church services. You carry a Bible. You know who Jesus is. You cannot get to heaven because you've been baptized, because you've been, Christ, because you've been christened. You have a, a cross or a St. Christopher around your neck. You cannot get to heaven because you have a Jesus tattoo or a verse uh, tattooed somewhere on your body. Not going to happen. And somebody needs to love you enough tonight to tell you the truth. You need to get right with God. All right, Pastor Joe, then how do I get to heaven? I'm glad that you asked. Here's how you get to heaven. From the beginning of the Bible to the end. From Genesis to Revelation, you have to have given God all of your heart. You have to have given God all of your life. That is the only way. So the question becomes this then. Who does your heart and who does your life belong to tonight? Because unless you can sincerely and emphatically say, Pastor Joe, my heart, my life belongs to Jesus Christ, I want to love you enough to tell you the truth, you're not going to make it. Let me just go a little bit further with you tonight. Your life cannot belong to you. Your life cannot belong to the world. What does that mean? That means that the world is the greatest influencer of your life. Your life must belong to Jesus Christ. And until you come to the place where you say, God, I surrender all, all to your lordship. Have all of me, all of my heart, all of my life. I want to love you enough to tell you the truth. You need to get right with God. You're headed in the wrong direction. And let me be very clear today. What a tragedy that would be. Especially when God doesn't want you there. That's why he sent Jesus. Jesus doesn't want you there. That's why he went to the cross and, and died. A beaten, bloody mess. What a shame that you would end up there. When such a high price has been paid. When the door has been opened for you. But you know what? It's your call. It's your choice. God isn't forcing anybody. You have to give God all of your heart, and you have to give God all of your life tonight. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to simply count to three, hit my hand on my Bible, just like that. When I do, when I do, if you're here today and you need to give God all of your heart, you need to give God all of your life. If, if you'd be honest today and say, you know what, Pastor Joe, uh, my life doesn't belong. My heart does not belong to Jesus Christ. Then on the count of three, I just want you to simply put your hand in the air. I'll see that hand, and you can put it right back down. What you're saying by the raising of your hand is this, once again, Pastor Joe, I want to give God tonight all my heart, all my life, once and for all. Does that mean that you're going to be perfect? No. But ultimately what it means is your heart and your life belongs to Jesus Christ. So if that's you in the house, on the count of three, I want you to put your hand in the air. Uh, let me say this also before I, I count to three. Today, if you've, if, if you've prayed that prayer before with somebody... You, you've prayed a, a prayer to ask God into your heart, into your life, to give Him. But your life didn't back up that prayer. You also need to get right with God. You see, lukewarm people are not making it to heaven. What's lukewarm? Lukewarm is a little in, a little out, a little up, a little down. An occasional token prayer here and there. Here and there. You're not against God, but you're not wholeheartedly for God. That's what it means to be lukewarm. It means that you're riding the fence. Jesus says in the book of Revelation, when I come back, I better find you hot or cold. Because if I find you lukewarm, I'm going to vomit you from my mouth. That means people who are lukewarm are going to get ejected and rejected from the body of Christ. Let that not be you today. If you're lukewarm in the house, let me love you enough to tell you the truth. Today is your day of salvation. Today is your day to give God all of your heart, all of your life. So on the count of three, I believe, I believe tonight that the Holy Spirit is dealing with some hearts. Listen, you don't, you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get before it's too late. So let this be the day. Let this be the, let this be the opportunity that you take to give God all of your heart and to give God all of your life. Be headed for heaven 
denying hell. Once again, if that's you, just simply put your hand in the air. I'll see it. You can put it right back down. One, two, three. Anybody today? God bless you. One, two. Two wise people in the house. I didn't embarrass them. Not going to embarrass you. Two wise people. Pastor Joe, I want to give God all my heart. Pastor Joe, I want to give God all my life. Three, four, thank you. Five, five wise people in the house today. Thank you guys, you can put your hands down. Five wise people, changing course, changing direction tonight. Giving God all of their heart, giving God all of their life. Anybody else? Anybody else today? Pastor Joe, I want to give God today all my heart. Pastor Joe, I want to give God today all my life. Five wise people. If you're sitting in your seat thinking that you should do this, you should. That's God dealing with your heart. Anybody else today? Pastor Joe, I want to give God all my heart. I want to give God all my life. Well, praise God for the five wise people in the house today. Changing direction, changing course. Laying hold of heaven, denying hell. Best decision of your entire life. Praise God. This is what I want to do. I'm going to ask those of you who raised your hands to make a bold move. I'm going to ask in just a moment for everybody to stand to their feet. And when they do, those of you who raised your hands, I want you to get out of your seat. I want you to walk these aisles. And I want you to come meet me right down here in front. I want to congratulate you. Then I want to introduce you to one of my friends who's going to lead you in a prayer to give God all of your heart and all of your life. You don't get saved just by raising your, your hand. You get saved by inviting Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life. So let us help you do that. And so if I could have everybody at this time, go ahead and stand to your feet. And those of you who raise your hands, go ahead and uh, make your way. Grab a friend if you need a friend. Praise the Lord, there's more than five down here. Woo, God is good. I'll tell you what, you got to know, the Bible says that heaven is rejoicing because of the decision that you've made today. Rejoicing, absolutely emphatic, absolutely excited. Praise God, you know there's still people coming. So, you know, if you didn't raise your hand, but you know you should have come, go ahead and come out of your seat right now. Go ahead and come, make your way out of your seat right now. Still people come in, I think. All right. Well, hey, listen, if you look over to your left, my right, this is Pastor Joel. He's one of my good friends. He's going to take you right back over here. Uh, nothing weird goes on. All right. He's just going to lead you in, in a simple prayer to give God all of your heart and all of your life. I want you to know today that uh, the Bible says, if you, from your heart, say, Jesus, be the Lord of my life with your mouth, the Bible says you're saved that moment, no questions, and no ifs, ands, or buts about it. you, become a child of God that moment, that easy, all right? Irreg regardless of your past, okay? Uh, it's just a simple prayer from your heart to give God all of your heart, all of your life. So he's going to lead you in that prayer, and then he's also going to offer to you what we call an SPT. What's an SPT? It's a spiritual personal trainer. Pastor Joe, what's that? Uh, just like you go to a gym, uh, and, and you'd hire a trainer, a personal trainer to help you get fit physically. We want to help you get fit and strong spiritually, all right? And so he'll tell you a little bit more about that. Uh, so if you'll go ahead and make a left-hand turn, uh, follow him right back over there. He's going to lead you in that prayer. Just take a few moments.